Hello and welcome to another edition of Being Busy Sports Talk. I'm your host, John Clemens, and today my special guest is Pop Williams, the legendary Pop Williams. Uh, he's been the basketball coach at Eastside for how many years now? He's been the head coach for 20 years. 20 years? and 21. He's had some of the most successful programs and seen some of the most star-studded athletes come through his halls, and that's because of his tutelage. First of all, I'd like to say welcome to you. Thank, Thank you for being you. with us today. Thank you. Uh, Pop, would you just begin just by telling us about some of your successes or you know, some of the teams and the players you've had the pleasure of coaching? Well, um, since I've been in Eastside, um, this is my, going on my 21st year. I've been in the playoffs 17 times out of, wow. in 20 years. I've uh, been to the Final Four five times, won the state 205, 206. Um, then won eight district titles. And most people don't understand what district titles are all about. It's like winning the SEC conference, you know, at Florida, the ACC yeah. conference. So, okay. you know, that's how big that is to win your right. district. And, uh, you know, since I've been coaching the East Island, I had some pretty good teams. Um, I'm probably the winningest coach in Gainesville at the same school. I've been at the same school. Uh, most coaches in Gainesville probably have been one or two of school. Right. So, um, right. you know, I've been blessed. Um, to be able to coach a lot of good athletes. Um, Eastside is the only school in Rochester County that had seven, eight Division One players. To go to Louisville, um, Donnie Matthew, South Carolina, uh, George Bird, Virginia Commonwealth. Um, we had uh, Contrell Martin, University of New Orleans. Okay. Um, you know, Benji, we count Benji in that Florida State. Um, we got Kevin Hill and Barker went to Arizona State. You know, we got quite a few kids that went big time. We're talking about teams that fly. We're not talking about teams that catch the buck. You know, we got kids that went to Valdosta State, FAMU, stuff like that. Right. We're talking about elite programs, you right. know. Um, um, so, you know, I've been blessed to be a coach, you know, these kids at East Side. So, it is what it is. Now, in 21 years, right. you've seen a shift in culture from the type of athletes that have come right. through. Right. How have you been able to maintain that level of success from the athletes 21 years ago to now? Well, I coach the same. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of my players, older players like Tim, them, you don't got a little softer, no, I don't got a little wiser. Because when I used to get on y'all, I run the hell out of them. Right. So it, it's about just getting a mental part of the basketball in their head mm -hmm. and make them understand there's consequences. So if you don't want to do what I say, I'm not going to argue with you, you know, there's it, a better way we can do that. Right. Either you can run the whole practice or you practice the whole practice. Which, which one you want to decide you want to do. Um, the kids these days, um, they don't want to put in the time to get better. They want to play, but they don't want to put in the time. Right. Um, and I'm sure Tim's spoken of that, you know, uh, being being dedicated to what you do. A lot of kids think basketball, if that's all you do is play basketball, but it's another part of the game of basketball, lifting weights, um, academics. All that goes together to be a, a, a decent player. You can be the best player you want to be, but if you ain't got grades, it's not going to do you any good. Right. So a lot of these kids is coming up. And the kids I have coached, now it's like, we didn't have to babysit then, but now you got to do more babysitting now. Uh, coach, I can't come to practice today, uh, don't have a ride. When we was coming up and Tim was going to road bikes. Right. Now it's a different perspective. They want to play basketball in air condition. We used to play in the sun to the park. So it's a different, different kids. And I mean, you just as a coach, you just can't change your ways for the kids. Either they're going to be your way or don't play. Right. So how do they receive your coaching? Because your coaching hasn't changed. So right. how do these new players receive your coaching? Well, some of them stay home and some of them get on the bus. Like right. transfer. You know, and the kids that parents knows what's best for them going going to keep them. But parents that don't want their kid to have that kind of guidance from another from another person, they probably will take them to another school. I'm gonna only coach the kid that goes to East Side. I'm not gonna worry about a kid that's leaving. Right. Because what about the next man up? Yeah. He deserved that same chance that the guy, the guy that was, you was given that opportunity to. And he might even step up and be a better, you know, better kid attitude. You don't have to worry about teachers in the class, you know, telling you something. So it's really, it, it's it's really a plus, you know. I mean, you might not have the greatest season, mm -hmm. but you still can get at that goal, you okay. know, to, to win. Now, beyond just there being a different type of player, uh -huh. what are some of the challenges you are having to overcome? Well, just. Overall, challenges as a coach, you have to overcome beyond basketball in order to get that same product consistently on the court. Well, you know, a lot of the younger kids that I coach, you know, they, they need attention. You know, some of them don't have both parents there, and, you know, they want somebody to talk to. They need a coach to talk to. 
and I'm a person that you can call me all the time of night, in which I have kids call me and they want to know how can they get their calves big or because they don't have a father there to kind of, to kind of take them through the, the program. Right. So to be able to coach, you got to be able to be like the kids. Okay. There's a business part and there's a playing part. A kid can play better for you if you feel like you with him. Okay. But then between the lines of basketball, that's my job. So when they get on the court, they know that's my job. It's not going to be like we're friends. So all, all in saying that, that once you show that part of a kid, then they don't mind playing for you, and then you can get the best out of them. Okay. Because um, I know, like we were talking previously about mm -hmm. some of the challenges you know, like you said, they they want to win, right, they right, want to right, play, right. but they don't want to work for it. Right. So, do they come in with that mentality and they kind of shift to your way of thinking, or is that just a constant battle the entire time? Well, that you're coaching? well some of some of the kids. See, the biggest problem that we have, high school coaches have, when kids don't play the AAU, where a coach is not structured. If he's not structured, and just let them get out there and play. So when they come to me, what you think they want to do? They just want to play. They want to run down the floor and shoot. But then when you get a team that can play, you just can't do that. So the battle that we have in high school is try to get them to transition from AAU to high school, which that is tough. So you hope your kids are playing with somebody that's going to teach them to like in school. You want your kid to be with the best teacher going to teach your kid in the classroom. Right. You don't want the teacher to say, well, I'm going out of class and then my son, my son can learn when you out of class. Right. He can learn when you're in class. So, I want my kids, if they plan a AAU, to get on a structured team, which is up to the parents. If you can't buy into what I'm trying to teach you, then I'm sure there's a kid that's going to buy in. Right. And you're going to have to learn the hard way on the bench or, or just, like I said, you know, you got, if, if, I'm not the, if I'm not the coach that you need, then you need to go somewhere else. And I, and I feel like if you're going to learn, then I'm going to teach you. Right. And I mean, it, it, that's the toughest situation about you know, coaching young men today. Speaking of AAU, just your opinion right. on AAU because it's been said that AAU is destroying right. basketball. Right. Right. What's your opinion on it? Is it? I mean, because you were saying there are some structural teams in AAU, but right. I've seen AAU tournaments, right. Right. and it's a lot of you got a couple right. athletes running up and down right. the court and doing like you just, just shooting the ball. So, is it helping some, hurting some? Was it? Is it? Does there need to be some kind of overhaul to AAU and how it's conducted to help? Basketball coach. Well, well, AAU, it helps a little and it helps none because you can play AAU and don't have grades. And a okay. coach see you out there playing AAU and you're the baddest thing out there, who can you help? Right. But why is your AAU coach letting you play AAU if you ain't got no grades in high school? Why are you not playing on your high school team? There's a reason. Okay. You can't say you don't like the coach. So AAU has brought us to another point that it's hurting the game of basketball. It's a money market and if you can think about it, like when we used to play, we used to go play to the park. It was free. Now you paying to play. You paying to play basketball for somebody, and and you used to go to the boys' club. You know, you used to go to Langley. Now you got to pay somebody to play on their team, which we grew up just playing. Like you said, right. just playing to the park, getting right. better. You know, and just like Mr. Shanker said, we didn't have to pay people to work us out. Now parents have to pay to get their kid worked out because they're not going to do it on their own. And AAU is a sense that it's a money market and they only, you know, I can get a monster team and beat everybody. But how am I getting better? If my team is loaded and the other team is not loaded, they got two players, and we beat them 80, 80 to something, I'm not getting any better. And then I'm thinking about the, uh, a lot of kids doesn't. One thing is watch the NBA. What's happening in the NBA? They're hopping from one school. Uh, uh, LeBron going here. Uh, Kyrie going here. So they see it on a professional level, and it's going to trigger down now to high school where kids, and the new ruling now is, I can play basketball at the east side, and play football at GHS, and then play baseball at Buell all in one year, as long as I got a physical and a parent for them. So now, I can just go to school, but I got to be I have a home school. PK can be my home school. I can go to Buell, GHS, and east side. Really? I, yeah, that new rule right. change is going to present some new right, challenges right, for Right, right, right. So do you, how do you see that playing out? Because I was wondering, you know, because that athletes like to play together. Right, right. So do you see this where uh, uh, it's going to be a mass exodus at some schools and they're going to, like you say, all come together, if you will, like a big three or whatever at different schools, whether it be football, basketball, baseball, and 
try to do well at that one school and then hop to another school for the next sport. Do you see a lot of that happening? Or yes. You, you have a kid. He's, he's at East Side. He's in, the, he's in the 10th grade. And he's at the end of his 10th grade year, so he's hoping to go to varsity, right? But then I get five kids to transfer over. And they play, and now your son can't play varsity. So now your son is hurt. You've been a lawyer from my ninth grade to my JV, and you've been a lawyer player, you're getting better. But then I'm trying to win. So I'm going to get five players from each school, but they're going to be better than your son. So now your son can't move up. And that means your son got to suffer all because this coach trying to win. And now your kid feeling, you know, outcast because now I worked all my time to play boss of the east side. Five kids, he go recruit five kids. And now I can't play. Then the first thing will come to you is I'm gonna change it for my kids. So now it's an on one thing. It's a domino. Effect. Right, right, right. So um, being loyal to your coach is something that we don't have now because kids are doing it major now, and they find in the school that if if Bills has a great baseball team, I'm gonna go to Bills, and I don't need to go to East Side. So I understand that you know because we all doing the same thing as basketball. Mm -hmm. But they want to all go to a program, still to be their own best individuals. Like if you're good at PK, I want to be good at Eastside. I don't want to play with you. I want to play against you. That's what's gonna make me better. Right. Just because we loaded, that don't mean we gonna be. We might win a state, but that's still. I still ain't got no better. We, we won right. a state because we had five or eight boys that can play. Right. I haven't got any better. I want to be able to play against those eight boys, where I can show my talent to coaches out there. I won't be able to show my attack. They might see I can play, but I want to let them know I can play defensively, offensively, you know, and everything else that goes with that, you know. But it, it's going to be drastic, and it's getting like that now. And speaking of that, you know, mm -hmm. talking about coaches and recruiting, right. because I've heard, you know, coaches, I've just heard from different coaches right. mm -hmm. at the next level saying right. that they pay attention to whether you, when you're shifting schools like that. Right, right. They pay attention to They want to know why, because, like you talk about loyalty. Right. We don't want to recruit a player who we feel is not going to be loyal to the right. program and loyal to us. Right. Um, so how do you think that's going to affect, because see, our area is already hurting to right. get that type of attention. Right. Right. We're not a big market. Right. So how do you think all this hopping is going to affect recruiting in our area if it does indeed happen to that level of magnitude? See, like I said, it all boils down to the coaches. If, if, you, if, look, if a kid leaves, he leaves, okay? But... A lot of coaches, and like I said, a lot of coaches now is kind of doing a lot of recruiting up under the table. Mm -hmm. And they worry about a record. They worry about being the winning this coaching game, Bill, you know, and, 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 and about they can win 20 games a season. So I'm going to try to get the best player. Okay, so that means as college coaches, you're looking at that. And I don't have a couple of kids on been them, four different schools every year. And those kids with that. Great grade, but they wind up nobody recruiting because of you don't been to school to school. So I know when you got to college, you're gonna do the same thing. So the kid was smart enough; he walked on for a school, and then he wind up playing one year at that college and left. So you got to think about. It. I mean, you know, some coaches gonna get that the opportunity and see can you change, and sometimes you don't change. And sometimes right. you know, so it, it's, it just sticks to your character. Right, 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 right. right. And see, that's what I think a lot of folks don't understand, you know, because they, they see this this move by right. the state of Florida as a good right. one. Right. But I see it as it's going to be a problem because some schools are going to suffer greatly from right. it. Others right. may benefit from a right. record standpoint. Right. Right. Well, like you said, all those athletes being developed. It's the same thing I say to athletes who are trying to go to school. You don't necessarily go to that shiny right. diamond school like right. an Alabama football right. is Alabama or another SEC right. school. Right. Right. You have to look at what's the best situation for you and your development right. Right. based on what your goals are for yourself. So bringing it down to this level is dangerous because these right. kids are far more impressionable, right. you know, and like by their friends or by, you know, family saying you right. need to go here and so forth and whatnot. Right. And it may end up to that detriment by the, by the time they realize it's right. too late. Right. Um, as a coach, I mean, how do you combat that? Or what, do you feel any pressure, added pressure because of this new dynamic that's been created? Well, not really because... If, if you get into that situation and you worry about that, then you won't be able to coach because, I mean, our job is to teach. And I got to teach the next man. Right. If I'm sitting there worried about a kid that's going to leave, I'm not being proud of your son. I mean, I got to get your son ready. And if he go down with a broke leg, I still got to get somebody replaced. Right. But he left. 
So I still got to get somebody to replace him. So as a coach, you got to prepare yourself to be able to work with the next man. Okay. And he might not be as athletic than the guy that left, but you got to at least try to get him there because this kid is, he, he really wants to be good. And if he got that desire, like Mr. Shane said, that then if he was going to work, and he can get to that point. Now, like I said, you, yeah. you've had the pleasure of coaching a lot of a lot of different athletes, mm -hmm. and you know some may have started out okay right. and developed right. into something great. Right. What, what, who would you say is like a Pop Williams certified player? Like, in, what do you look for in your athletes from all dimensions, athletically, uh, mentally, all those things? What do you look for in, in a player? His toughness, uh, smartness, and and just really just just a good all around kid. Um, Back in the day, we had Don, Donnie Matthews. I'm sure Donnie played for South Carolina. Um, Donnie was kind of like an image of me because when I went to play, he went with me, and everybody used to think that was my son because, but he played just like you. And Donnie was one of those um, kids that was, I mean, he'd get in there and work, and I mean, he had that heart. The next kid came down was Dante. Had that killer, could play, had that attitude, didn't want to lose, tough, no. And you look at both of those guys, they were D1 player. And they really, they really, and Tim, Tim, Tim was one of those per kids that, you know, really wanted to win and, and controlled it, you know, controlled it, because Tim, when, when we was, our first time we went to the Final Four, Tim was a freshman. We went to the Final Four. As a senior, we won state with Tim. And Tim came in and started as a point guard. Uh -huh. So, um, that hard nose defensive type of kid that, you don't want to step back from nobody and just get out there and play. Is it difficult to find those type of type players these days? Yeah, 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 yeah. You just, like I said, that comes from because they're not playing with the old men. Right. They playing with the young guys that they grew up with, and then they think they, and then when they meet against a grown man that can play, they don't shy away because they ain't seen nothing like that. Yeah. And that's the difference. They want to play in that condition. They want to play with their buddies. And then when they play with somebody that crossed the line, they can't play because they don't play with their buddies too much. So they don't have that heart to go out there and compete because their buddy ain't going to yell at them or ain't right. going to get them. And see, I, I, that, uh, that's a problem across all schools. Right. Right. You know, this right. generation, like everybody gets a trophy right. generation. Right, right, right. right. It, right. It's, it's affecting the quality of the game right. that they're being played. But for me, you know, that's a concern for me in this right. area because you, in Atlanta, those big areas, right. those big markets, right. that, that's fine to have it because you're going to get enough of those hard those kids there right. who um, play. But for us, who we want to start bringing more attention to these athletes, right. we have a nice wealth of athletes right. here. They right. just, like you said, either they're uncultivated or they're missing one of those elements right. to be great. Right. You know, so right. I don't know, um, like you're saying, if we can take it back, I don't, I don't even know how we would begin. It, it, right. That's something. If you had your perfect world, if you could change something about the way it is now, I mean, what what do you see as a program, something that would be affected? Like you said, them playing against the older men. Is, right. If we could have some type of summer league or something where they, they do go out to the court right. and right. compete against someone that's older than them, because all the kids, I'm, that's how we came up. You go against somebody older, right. Right. that's like, kind of like your right to passage, you know what right. I mean? Right. Um, I don't know if we could even develop a culture like that again. Do right. you think that's possible? Well, it's possible, but the point is like um, Littlewood, you know, it's older guys go out there, they can play out there, but they don't want to get out there and play with the older guys. They worry about the language that the older guys, but if you respect the young man, it doesn't matter what they send out there, how they, you going out there playing, getting right. better. They scared of, you know, the language that, you know, because it ain't all good language they're using out there, the older guys, so they're bad with from they'd rather go to the MIK way, it's mellow out. Right. It's, it's an opportunity there. But they don't want to take it. Wow. Um, as a coach, like I said, you've been coaching for a long time. And like I said, it's, it's, it's frustrating yeah. from all levels. What keeps you motivated? I mean, the, the, you just year after year after year. Well, you see a kid that has a dream. And I had a dream. And, and my dream was to be a head coach. I used to always listen to what everybody said, man, you'll never be a head coach because you don't have a college degree. And I always used to think that, but I never gave up. And when I got the opportunity, I feel like when I got the opportunity to be a head coach, I was going to make sure that kids live your dream, never give up, because you're going to have that same opportunity. It might not be a coach. It might be a player. It might be a coach. It might be a doctor. It might be, don't give up on the dream that you always had. So when I look at young men, that's what I see, a dream. And every kid that you coach, got the great story. 
you can tell that story, you know, we hit on the NFL and NBA. Yeah. Then when you look in the face of young men and say, don't get in trouble, I mean, and, and just want to do it, they might not have the heart, but you can sit in their face, they want to be something. Yeah. They just got to give a little more extra to, to get there, and it's not going to be easy, and that's what keeps me doing. Now, you, uh, can you think of a player, because you've had some players who had that dog in them, can you think of a player that you thought wasn't going to be much of nothing, but then... After a while, you saw that he probably had some hunger, probably was just green, but then you see them go from just being an okay player to actually being one of your, I guess, your starters or one of the players that you depended on. Somebody, if you get sad, then also, do you get more satisfaction out of developing one of those players or uh, working with one of those guys who already had that, like you say, that had the kind of like a, a mirror image of you, right, right. that dog, and which one? Well, I can coach any, you know. When I coach, I don't I don't hold a kid back. If he can score, he can score. You know, I, I, I'm a I'm a believer. Of, if you want to score, you got to run the floor with me. I mean, if, if I'm by myself, I'm gonna shoot. But if you run with me, I'm gonna get you in the play. My offense is consider of every it's making reads like everybody. I, my full my four man is not gonna be a post player all the time. You have to be probably with him the basket and score because in Gainesville, everybody's dogs on the next level. Yeah. Look at it, man. You're about around 6'10". Right. So everybody are point guards and two. So that means if you got a forward, he's six five. On the next level, you're a point guard. So you want to display their ability to be able to shoot away from the basket and put the ball on the floor. So it's like I'm not going to handicap them in the game of basketball. So you can be me or you can be Tim, a ball handler, or whatever. You got to display that. And I'm going to get confidence in Every kid that goes out there and, and feel free to do what you want to do, that's how you win. You don't win by keeping kids in boxes. So yeah, you, you coach them, but you coach them to be who they are, right. not who you want them to be. Yeah. I mean, you want to coach them to, in your system, but you allow them right. to be who they right. are now. Right. And you know what I wish to Nice coaching point. You know, you yeah. know what I tell them? Y'all can play with us because y'all get mad because us shoot, we shoot. Y'all have wide open shots to give them away. So y'all can play with us on, y'all wonder why we shoot. We wide open. We even the pass to you. Right. Why would we give it up to you and we open? Yeah. Now when we coach, you'll get it. What you mean, coach? I said, because that's how you play. Why give up a shot if you wide open? Playing attack mode. Right, right. I say, I mean, that's the NBA is all about scoring. Mm -hmm. They teach you defense in the NBA. All the NBA players are scoring. You might have two or three under rebound. They're getting all that money just a rebound. Right. But majority of them are scoring. They're not another have a hundred assists. It's about that excitement. Right. Yeah. That's what and, and college like that, that's why me and Coach Donovan came in the same time in Florida. And and I and I use Billy as a because Billy been in Florida, had been in Florida for like twenty uh he might have been nineteen. But we came in at the same time. Billy has nineteen, he had nineteen more than in, in, in the NBA. And that wasn't because because all the kids that he had were scores. Billy knew to get you in the league, it was about scoring. Yeah. Wow. That, that ain't no luck there, you know no. what I'm saying? Though? And if you look at Florida, all the boys, and they all played the same position, pretty much the three spot, mm. and it was scoring. That's it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that, that's a good coaching point. Right. Well, Coach, I really appreciate your time with us today and uh, the knowledge that you dropped. I uh, definitely want to thank you for being a staple well, in this community, giving you. back to these young men. You've been a father figure to a lot of young men who walk these halls, and basically they've gone on and – some of them are coaching us. A lot of them are mentoring young men the same way right. that you continue to do right. it. So, you know, God bless you. I, I pray that you can do it for another 15, 20 years. This wraps up another edition of Being Busy Sports Talk. We'll see you next time. Being Busy, stay busy.